Hi, hello, this is Sridham Mankatesh and welcome to my cha YouTube channel Software Sridham. Today we are going to learn something which is uh, a, a component in fact in uh, uh, cloud computing and that is Microsoft Azure Service Fabric. So uh, we will try to understand what is Microsoft Azure Service Fabric. Azure Service Fabric is uh, actually an open source project which powers the Microsoft Azure infrastructure code. So, uh, for example, it could be you know, it could be a Skype or an Intune or a Microsoft Azure Cosmos DB or it could be a Microsoft Azure Data Factory. So it is kind of an open source project now. So basically, it's a micro related to the microservices. It's a, if you want to develop the microservice, if you want to go ahead with the Microsoft. Uh, microservices development or application lifecycle management and also if you want to host so there are a lot of it is basically used for hosting so uh, say for example when I compare a virtual machine so a physical I mean if you have the virtual machine uh, compared with a cloud okay so uh, when you talk about virtual machine what does a virtual machine do generally so in any applications if you look into your software in industry uh, so uh, many applications will be there and also in those applications each and every task there would be uh, a number of services that are uh, hosted in that particular virtual machine isn't it say for example if i have s1 to sn as a services say for example so these what, what does a virtual machine do virtual machine does s1 to sn all these services uh, in, uh, there so now it hosts all these services isn't it so but when it comes to azure service fabric and also we'll talk about a terminology called as containers okay containers so these this azure service fabric uh, architectural over, overview we are going to see how uh, azure service fabric really looks like and also we'll see how many number of services are there so how it deals with these services through the form of you know containers so all these things we are going to see without wasting any more time let's quit get into the video let's get into that uh, whiteboard and we'll see the architectural diagram okay thank you hello all so we are able we are back we are back with an uh, architectural diagram for azure service fabric if you see the azure service fabric you can see that there is containers and microservices written and also there's a top heading called as an azure service fabric now let's see the, what what does this uh, you know what does this containers do uh, in this azure service fabric versus the virtual machines first we'll discuss on that okay say for example if you are having a containers uh, if you are uh, instead of a virtual machine say for example if your uh, application is hosted into cloud microsoft azure cloud uh, azure cloud that is in the form of a microsoft azure service fabric now say in this azure service fabric this is open source project as i told there are multiple container nodes which are available say for example if i want to perform my act uh, say there are n number of services which are hosted generally in vms likewise here also different types of services are there s1 to sn so all this s1 to sn whatever the services which are there these services are indeed taken care by individual containers so that is the special point of it individual nodes now so there are certain uh, uh, that is the main uh, idea about it so for example if say for example the uh, there is a service uh, which is like uh, want to send a mail so if you want to send a mail there's some kind of hosting is done in kind of uh, hosting is done in the containers now for example uh, for to perform the service now action say for example a node one n1 i call it as n1 here so n1 uh, opens up in a service uh, fabric and also it performs that action that container c1 on n1 it performs that particular action and it dies there so as soon as the action is completed now this particular c1 or the n1 node 1 of the containers dies so again it in turn triggers another uh, container c2 so this is the basic principle of containerization so one node dies the other node wakes up triggers and that performs so this is how it does now if you look look at this particular diagram carefully so there are a lot of features about this azure service fabric and also containerization if you look at so the first salient feature if i talk about is lifestyle management so if you look at lifestyle management in the sense say uh, uh, it's like if you if i want to say if i want to talk about azure service it's, it's like a fully automatic washing machine that's there in your house 
it will rinse it will wash it will dry everything it will does it does right so for example if I, if i want to you know lifestyle management means it's it itself manages everything okay it itself manages everything there is no third party intervention required say for example if i have a virtual machine okay if i have a virtual machine now vm physical server is there the vms are there and then in that case if there are not they are not on the cloud then obviously any sort of patching is required then what do additional patching has to be done externally to those virtual machines but here when you talk about azure service fabric and also containers so it itself always have that uh, flexibility to manage the lifestyle of that particular service uh, containers by itself so any patching or any kind of upgrades and rolling any sort of upgrades it that it just performs like a fully automatic washing machine in your house okay so the second one salient feature if i talk in the red color if you are able to see that is always on availability say for example if you talk about this uh, service fabrics right containers right so there are uh, do you think these containers are placed only in one particular x location no these containers are placed across different regions if in in an organization if you look at say for example one containers some containers are placed in us east region okay some containers are placed in some kind of a southeast asia region or some containers are placed in the europe region so likewise obviously there are different regions are there so in when you have different regions the availability so if something goes down also the other ones always uh you know it, it wakes up right so always on availability in uh, if you look at the uh, in terms of the different locations the always on availability thereby uh, uh, is a salient feature because of all these and also you have this orchestration orchestration is uh, similar to what lifestyle management is okay so it itself you know uh, automatically updates upgrades everything into in the, in its uh, containers uh, front okay so any kind of patching or any kind of upgrades are there orchestration by itself it does in the azure cloud okay so and when you talk about the uh, fourth point that is the programming models uh, models so uh, say for example do you think in this azure service fabric uh, only one application is hosted you know this is also having you know um, uh, i mean uh, do you think this is a open source project and we have got this an organization has got this and do you think only one application is hosted no say for example a travel application is hosted sometimes uh, at node c1 say for example and another uh, say banking application is hosted healthcare application is hosted likewise we have different types of applications different types of applications which are hosted so how does this azure service fabric azure service fabric is very interesting it's like a robot it will just find any sort of you know uh, if it wants to connect if it want to host a particular application for example uh, azure service fabric wants to host c1 container on what the uh, first application travel application then there is a programming model internally it is written so that it will be able to connect to that particular application internally the scripting is already done which we are not, uh, able to see it but yes so like likewise if you want to if that azure service fabric wants to connect to another app, healthcare application so there is an again a programming model that is written so likewise you can have n number of uh, applications which are being hosted in, in this azure service fabric without any interruption based on its principle of read triggering the nodes so that's something which is in case of any action is completed so it's great now what about the dev dev ops tooling since we are talking about the azure cloud since we are talking about the azure devops right so obviously there is a task which is integrated it's very close very much closely integrated with the azure devops portal as well so that whatever the task you might be seeing the pipelines and all right so whatever the task that is uh, there is always a task which is associated which is associated with this uh, uh, azure service uh, fabric so always there is a link linkage is always there so if it's closely integrated with devops means it's closely integrated with the code if any kind of a triggering uh, required also it's closely integrated with the code so that's what i talk about dev and ops tooling okay so and also auto scaling so you might talk about so auto scaling in the sense say for example the memory or utilization or any sort of 
things which are there similar on those grounds so it 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 generally doesn't waste okay how much is required how much memory is required how much uh, you know utilization is required how many clouds we want if you want to set up more machines okay so if you want to host more applications you can auto scale you need not have uh, additionally you need not purchase something or uh, you know uh, from the cost point also it's very uh, advantageous okay so that's how so on premise data centers as i already told you there is a, a different data centers are available on premises uh, data centers different locations different regions so and that's what it helps you know to go with the, the always on availability as well so and health and monitoring health and monitoring in the sense this always uh, so if say for this, for example say for example there is something like a, a kind of a uh, low utilization of memory some kind of disturbance is happening inside it's just like our body you know okay so whenever our body you know has some kind of a fever and also we our body our body generally tells us right our bo body generally tells us that uh, yes i am uh, you are sick your temperature has increased body temperature has increased likewise it also has uh, in case of any downfall or anything there are certain alerts being sent and also there are some uh, if you even check the monitoring logs as well inside that azure service fabric there's always a logs which are present so you can even uh, check that uh, logs as per your convenience on that particular day and check out that why th this particular node was down if any sort of disturbance happens in that particular mechanism or the system so and also uh, last two things i want to say you can run anything you can run anywhere okay so run anywhere in the sense you can operate this with an windows linux any sort of you know uh, ubuntu operating systems okay you can run anything any sort of programming model you can run there is nothing like a restriction that only this particular programming i can do likewise there are plenty of plethora of options available so that's how we can do so this is a uh, service fabric all the different components of service fabric hope you have you are able to understand this is shriram venkatesh so signing off thank you